Y'all, it has been a busy, crazy day, but we are making cloverleaf rolls for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for the holidays, for any time you're having a special dinner. They are so easy. You're going to love them. Let's head over and do it. Y'all, I have to tell you, it is cold in here, or it is cold to me. Texas has lost its mind, but these cloverleaf rolls are so delicious that it's unbelievable. They're light, they're fluffy, they're buttery, buttery. They are so good. You are never going to buy those cardboard taste and rolls at the store again. So, so easy to do. Um, what the main thing that you want to make sure of is that everything is warm. Okay. Yeast does not like anything to be cold. It doesn't like anything to be hot. It wants everything to be comfortable and about Mm, 110 degrees is just about right. You want it to be um, just a really nice warm bath water. If you're in doubt, if uh, you have any doubt at all about your ability to um, feel warmth or decide whether it's too hot or not, get your trusty InstaRead thermometer and check it that way. All right. So we're going to use two packets of um, active dry yeast or two tablespoons. Now, we have run into problems before where people say, well, two tablespoons isn't the same as two packets. And you are absolutely right. Two tablespoons is not the same as two packets. Okay, first of all, I have to explain this. Um, these are rose clippers. And the reason that I am using these is because, once again, everyone has stolen my scissors. So rose clippers it is because it's the only thing I could find to cut with. Anyway, two packets are not the same as two tablespoons. But when I have bought yeast in bulk, I use tablespoons because I don't, it, it's just, I don't read recipes when I'm making bread. I've made it forever. And it's just easier for me to remember two packets or two tablespoons rather than, um, is that one and a quarter teaspoons or you know, like that. So it doesn't matter that much. If you want it to be exact, then you use the exact measurement, which um, I'm honestly not sure what it is. But two packets, or if you're using bulk yeast, use two tablespoons or whatever you want to use. Honestly, it doesn't matter that much. It's not rocket science. All right, so we've got our two packets of yeast in there. I'm going to put in one teaspoon of sugar. That gives the yeast something to grow with. And a little pinch of ginger. Now, this does not flavor it at all. And I'm talking a little pinch. Um, it just helps activate the yeast. I learned this trick from like one of my really, really old cookbooks. And it works really, really well. If you don't want to use it, if you don't have the ginger, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I'm going to make sure that that water is warm enough, and then we're just going to pour that right over the top and set that aside. Give it a little stir. Now, what that's going to do as we set that aside is that yeast is going to start bubbling up and getting frothy. That's what we want. A lot of newer recipes say that you don't have to proof the yeast. You don't have to test the yeast and make sure it's alive anymore or anything like that. And that's probably true. You probably do not. But I like to do that because there is the possibility that if yeast is old, it doesn't work as well, or maybe you've gotten a bad batch, or maybe you've put your water in there too hot, or any number of things. And so I do like to go ahead and proof, proof the yeast by doing this. It takes five minutes. It's not a big deal. And you can do that and set it aside for that five minutes while you're putting everything else together, okay? Not a big deal. So if you want to skip this part, you can skip this part, but I just really suggest you do it. And it, it just doesn't take that long. Now, while that yeast is proofing, to my 
mixing bowl, I'm going to add a half a cup of sugar. Dinner rolls are richer and sweeter than bread, so they do usually take a little bit more sugar and usually an egg, um, milk, more butter than regular bread. One and a half cups of warm milk. And you can use um, like non-dairy milk if you like. I'm using evaporated milk because if you've um, gone to my blog or watched my videos very much at all, you know that I really like evaporated milk. I think it helps make baked goods and um, baked things, cream sauces, everything a lot creamier. And I just like using it. Plus, we do use a lot of non-dairy milk at our house. Um, the, the kids prefer it. And sometimes I don't think it works as well in some baked goods. So I like to have evaporated milk on hand. So that's what this is. But you can use regular milk, evaporated milk, non-dairy milk, whatever you want. The, if you do use a non-dairy milk, it probably is going to make a difference in the richness, however. Okay, so and then one egg. And we're gonna mix that up. Oops, we're gonna mix that up. And I'm gonna add a fourth of a cup of flour before I add the yeast. And I'll tell you why in just a second. And here's our yeast. It's gone ahead and started to foam up. And I'm going to add the yeast now. So the flour is going to kind of help coat the yeast before we add the salt and the butter. That's going to ultimately help it rise better. I'm just going to add that yeast right in there. Give it a little stir. Add another fourth cup of the flour. Two teaspoons of salt. And a fourth a cup of our melted butter. The butter and the um, salt can keep the yeast from rising, you know, it, it coats the yeast, it can keep the yeast from working properly. So I like to get a little bit of flour in there before I add those things. You get that a little stir. Now I'm going to add one and a half cups of the flour. Be sure that when you are measuring out your flour, you are um, scooping it out with a spoon softly and not packing it down and then just brushing it off like that. So there's one. And there's one and a half, and then the half cup that we already put in there, that makes two cups. And we'll give that a stir. Now, as you can see, it's just really um, a wet batter right now. I'm going to add the flour a little bit at a time until I get a very soft dough. The recipe calls for five cups of flour total and we've put in two so we should basically need about three more I can usually eyeball it but you want to measure this carefully especially if you're not experienced with making bread you want to end up with a soft dough because 
the more flour you put in there, the heavier your finished product's going to be and the, um, the more, what's the word I'm looking for, um, coarse, the more coarse your generals are going to be. If you want them light and fluffy, you need to have the least amount of flour possible that still allows you to work with it, all right? The dough is starting to form. I don't know if you can see it. The dough is starting to just pull away from the edges. It's still really, really sticky, but it is pulling away from the edges, so it's probably pretty close to being ready to knead. I'm going to switch to <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to switch to the dough hooks, but I'm still going to continue to add a little bit of flour until. It is the uh, texture that I need. to knead dough a little bit by hand so even after it's been kneaded in the mixer I like to give it a few more um, turns by hand just to make sure that it's a good um, consistency and it's been well kneaded and it also gives me the opportunity to show y'all how to knead if you happen to be kneading by hand so the first thing that you're going to do if you're kneading by hand is you're going to throw a little bit of flour on your kneading board and you're going to put your dough down on it push you're going to take the heel of your hand you're going to push away from you and then you're going to pull it back turn it and push away from you again pull it back turn it push away from you again and pull it back and so it's, you're pulling this way with this hand, pushing with the heel of this hand, and then pulling it back. And you're doing that until the ball of dough feels like your earlobe. And I know that sounds strange. People are like, what? But if you, let me get this to a point. And this is very relaxing. It really, really is. So, if you've got your well-kneaded ball of the dough here, if you take it and you pinch, pinch it just like that, it will have the same kind of feel as if you pinch your earlobe. When you've got that, you know that you have kneaded it enough and it's a good, um, good texture and it's been well-kneaded and it's ready to um, rest and rise. The other way that you can tell it, if it's been kneaded enough is that it's elastic. It means you can pull it out and it will pull back. Bread dough is kind of easier to show that on because it's a hardier dough than, um, than dinner roll dough, which is more delicate. But you pull it out and it kind of pulls back. If you can see that. Yeah, I'm sure you can. All right, so that's how you can tell. So our roll dough is ready to rise in a warm place. Lots of warm places, even in the wintertime. Um, you can 
heat your oven up just a little bit. Uh, to, if you have, like, I've got a proofing setting on my oven that will heat it up to a hundred, between 100 and 110 degrees. That's perfect. Or you can put a bowl of boiling water in your oven, turn the oven light on, and then put your bowl with your um, dough in it on the rack above that boiling water, and that will be warm. You can put it in a warm place in your kitchen. Um, some people put it on top of the water heater. There's always kind of a warm spot that you can, you know, you can find to uh, let the dough rise. But the warmest spot is going to be the best spot, okay? Oops. So I'm going to get my bowl and I'm going to put a little butter in there, rub it around. And then I'm going to put this in the bowl and turn it. And then I'm going to set that aside until it rises double. Um, it's hard to see when you guys are looking overhead, I know. But it's right about here. When it's double, it's going to be kind of filling up this bowl. But you want, you want this to be um, greased on all sides, okay? So, so I'm going to put a clean tea towel over it. And this is not dirty, by the way. This is, uh, I threw it in the washing machine with some bleach. And then in the oven, it goes. Now, when I say in the oven, remember, my oven is on proofing right now. It is at 100 and, 105 degrees, and it will stay there until it is doubled. It should take about an hour, so I will see you back here then, all right? Okay. All right, y'all, here's our doubled dough. And as you can see, it really did, can you see? It really did come up to the top. The way that you tell if the dough is doubled is you stick your finger in, and if it doesn't fill back up, then it has doubled, and this is definitely doubled. So what we're going to do is we're going to punch it down. And I'm just going to tell you right now <laughs> that my day has gotten away from me something fierce, and I'm not only losing light, but... My kids are home. My husband's probably fixing to come home from work. It could get loud in here. And I'm always, I'm always afraid of that when I'm doing a video. It can get very frustrating. So um, I will try to edit out what I can if it does. But there's going to be some things that I won't be able to edit out. So I'm just saying that ahead of time in case something happens. All right. So here we go. So punch it down. And... When you punch it down, that doesn't mean like you're violent about it. You're just going to gently let the air out of it and bring it out onto the your board or your countertop like that. The reason that we're just gently letting the air out of it is because we want it to retain that lightness and that airiness in the you know in the dough. Um, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to cut this into roughly 90 balls. And the reason for that is that this makes 30 rolls, and each roll is made up of three balls. The easiest way to do it, see, my cutting board, my daughter-in-law gave it to me for Christmas last year. I love this cutting board. Okay. Thank you, Courtney. All right. So um, you've got to kind of eyeball it and in thirds. So I'm going to go like this and like this. And I want to have roughly the same amount in each one. You're going to get your cooking spray, nonstick spray, and spray these muffin things down, muffin cups, whatever you want to call them, down really well. Do not line them with paper liners. It will not work well. Now we're going to take our leftover butter, 
that was melted, and you're going to roll these into balls and just dip it in the butter and drop it right in there. You're going to drop three balls in each muffin cup. And I'm thinking that I want to make these a little bit bigger, so these may just make 24 if I make them a little bit bigger. So we'll see about that. One of the ways that I like to form the ball instead of rolling it about to keep a really smooth top is I put my finger in the middle and pull the rest of it around and it keeps and then squish the bottom and twist it like that and it keeps the top really smooth. You can see that? See how smooth the top is? And um, that helps them be prettier. It's one of the little secrets. So the way that you do that is you kind of pull the dough off, kind of form it into a ball, but then put your finger in the middle of it and push it right up in the dough, pull the other dough off, and then squeeze it together like that. So that you have kind of a bubble there. And then it's like that on the bottom where you've pulled it but then it's very smooth on the top. And that usually will keep them prettier than just rolling them. See if I can get this down a little bit closer so you can see a little bit better. So, what I'm doing is I've got a piece of dough here, and I'm putting my finger in here, pressing this and pushing up, pulling my finger out, and squeezing, and then pulling it off. It makes it very smooth on the top and um, very rounded. And I am going to be making these bigger than this one. I think this is only going to make 24. You can make them smaller if you want. That's fine. It kind of depends on the size of your muffin cups. These are bigger than the muffin cups that I used to have. And so I always have a hard time when I go back and make um, old recipes that I've made like 10 years ago because a lot of my... Uh, Equipment has changed, and it's a different sizes than it was back then. So you have to kind of go a little bit by the size of your equipment. If your muffin cups are small, and, um, you know, you, you might want to make the balls a little bit smaller, and you'll have fewer, you know, you'll have um, more rolls um, that are smaller. But if the muffin cups are bigger, you're going to have bigger rolls and fewer of them. Um, basically, you're going to fill the muffin cups about halfway up. And they will rise the rest of the way up. They're already starting to rise pretty good. because I'm t It's taking me longer than it usually does because I'm talking to y'all while I'm doing it. You know, I'm just one of those people that can't walk and chew gum at the same time. You know, I think with them being this big, it's really only going to make maybe 16. Hmm. Interesting. I will make notes in the recipe, I promise. All right. So once we get them to this point, uh, I'm going to brush them with melted butter. Because let me tell you, you can never ever have too much melted butter, I don't think.
and then they're going to rise for about another 30 minutes. All right? Put this tea towel back on and back in the oven for to rise for 30 minutes. They go. Um, or in a warm spot, wherever your warm spot is. I don't want you to think that I'm putting them in the oven to bake. I'm not. They're going in the proofing oven to rise. All right, y'all. We've got these uh, 12, right? And then these four. So 16 big ones and probably 24 medium sized ones and 36 small ones, just depending on the size of your muffin pans. And so now we're going to preheat the oven and go ahead and bake them. Before I put them in the oven though, I'm going to hit them with just a little bit more melted butter. I really like these to be buttery and there's just nothing like melted butter to add even more flavor. Now at this point you could actually brush them with uh, egg yolk, a little mixture of egg yolk and water and they'd get a nice golden brown and um, if you do that you could sprinkle them with sesame seeds or poppy seeds or anything like that and it would help them stick. So that's a possibility too, but I like mine to be plain and I'm just going to make them nice and buttery and shiny like that. So they're going to bake for, they're going to bake for about 12 to 15 minutes or until they're golden brown and done. And, um, Here's a little trick. If you wanted to make your own brown and serve rolls, you could bake them for about eight to 10 minutes, just until they were done, but not until they had started to brown. Then take them out, let them cool, freeze them. And then when you wanted fresh rolls, you just put them right in the oven from the freezer and let them brown and serve them hot and it's just like your own brown and serve rolls so that's something to keep in mind and the instructions for that are actually on the blog so um we're going to go ahead and bake these and i will see y'all in a few minutes okay y'all uh, these are monstrosities they are huge i would say that if you're going to do this for uh thanksgiving or a you know, um, a nice dinner, you probably want to make 24. And um, because these came out huge, but they look yummy and they smell yummy. And I'm going to, yes, brush them with butter just one more time. Everything is brushed with butter. These are giant cloverleaf rolls, I will tell you, but <laughs> that's okay because my family will be thrilled. They, it is pitch dark outside. This ha went a lot longer than I thought it was going to, and um, they have been waiting for dinner. I um, got caught up in my baking today, so not only did I do this, but I did a batch of cookies. And um, those will be on the blog as well, oatmeal cookies, old-fashioned kind. And um, so they are definitely starving to death, or they think they are. My dad used to say that he was so hungry that his stomach thought his throat had been cut. I'm going to put a little bit more butter on these because I just don't think I ever have too much. Sometimes it's just easier to do it like that. All right. And I have the other pan over on the other counter. Let me get a plate and let's see what we've got. All right there we go. Look how pretty that is. It's like I said, these are big. They're like a handful, but uh, they're very light and fluffy and delicious. Now, um, one way that you can tell if your rolls are done, especially when 
you've done like I did and made them larger than you anticipated and you know they're going to need a little bit more time. Use your InstaRead thermometer and rolls will be done when InstaRead thermometer says um, between 190 and 200 degrees they'll be fine. Whew, those are hot. Of course they are. They just came out of the oven. All right. So there's our plate of rolls. There is no way I'm not going to try one of these. The nice thing about um, clover leaf rolls is they break apart so easy. Look at this. Look at the texture of that. It's absolutely wild. I don't know if you can see how soft that is, but it is amazing. Get some butter. Ooh, y'all, look. Doesn't that look good? I mean, you know, there is no restaurant in the country. There is no um, commercially prepared roll that can beat this, I'm telling you. Look at that. Look at that shred. Mmm. I am telling y'all, these are so good. Mmm. They're light and they're fluffy. The shred, I mean, these are so good. You've got to try them. Please. I don't even know what else to say. You've just got to try them. Put a little bit of honey on them, a little bit of butter on them. They're so good for Thanksgiving. They freeze beautifully. So, make your own rolls. Freak everybody out. They're going to think you're amazing. You are amazing. You absolutely cannot miss with these on your holiday table. So, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to come back next week. I hope you like them. Check it out on the blog. It's got the nutrition information, lots more tips, and all kinds of stuff. I love y'all, and I'll see y'all next time, okay? Love y'all. Bye-bye. So good, I forgot what I was going to say.